it's anywhere between five and ten minutes so that leaves us just enough time to get one of the masks which we're going to do right now by using the chemical and yes i did take that first day spray with me only for contingency six though just in case shit goes south Because sooner or later, I'm going to have to use the first day spray anyway to make room for the musical notes. But it'll be fine because I get another one immediately before heading out to the guard shack and getting a crank. So I'm okay with using a green, with using a first day spray. And it's not like we'll ever be heading back to that chest anyway. So there's no real reason to leave it in the chest. Yeah, those zombies don't pose a threat to us. We're not gonna we're not coming through this hallway again either. There's quite a few rooms in this game where you only need to go through once. Otherwise you could just work your way around them. And now that we got Richard the serum, we're just gonna get the first half of the music, the second half of the musical notes. And work our way to get in the shell key. That zombie, if you're not if you're not um confident about your dodging skills, you can use the stairs. You can use the stairs around the corner. Cause since zombies if you and a zombie are on the same flight of stairs, zombies won't bite you at that point. They'll just try to spit at you. And at that point, it makes it a lot easier to dodge zombies. Th that little small area playing on type A controls is a real pain in the ass just because you don't have the quick turning. Quick turn that uh, type B controls give you. Because at that point, you have to, again, you have to run forward and then quickly tap back to get him to launch at you. But sometimes he won't do that. He'll just go straight for you and you don't have a lot of... And at that point, you're at small, very small room. So you have no room to dodge. <laughs> This zombie, I find it takes more time to try to run past them as it is, as opposed to just taking the hit and using the first aid spray. Because you have to use the first aid spray anyway. So I figured why, why waste a few seconds trying to run past them when you can just take the hit, run straight to the front and use the first aid spray anyway, save yourself a couple seconds.
on the way out of this hallway. Just run right past them. Zombies grabs when you're running when you're running past them from behind, they have almost no priority unless you run straight into them. So that's why a lot of times you'll see on a speed run when you when they're running behind a zombie, they just run straight through, they don't bother to stop. That's the reason why. And if you're curious as to whether or not I'm playing the Japanese version. No, I am not. I am playing the US version of the game. I just changed the end game text to Japanese. Reason being is there's less Japanese text to scroll through and you can scroll through it faster. Now we got the shield key and now we're going to deal with Yon for the first time. Snake won't ever spawn in this area until you try to run past a pillar and you trigger the cutscene. Where does the snake appear? I don't know. He kind of just appears out of nowhere because last I remember, there is no hole in this area where to where a snake can just drop in from. At least in the original Resident Evil, there was a hole on the ground. Let's run around a little bit. Get as far away from him as possible. And now we're going to start on loading. I got a little lucky that the snake decided to just stop and hit that before a second. So I could squeeze in a couple of shots. Otherwise, I would have been cutting in a little bit closer than I should have. And poor Richard. Richard! One man had to die so another white chick could live on. Fair trade to me. And we get his weapon. Now that I got the assault shotgun, the handgun is now officially worthless. And the assault shotgun I'm only going to be using pretty much from here on out until I get Barry's 44. If the handgun didn't uh, eventually cause zombies to turn into crimsons, it would probably be a much more effective weapon like how it was in the original. But because of that, just because of the concept of Crimson Heads in this game kind of makes the handgun not a good weapon compared to the shotgun and the grenade launcher and the magnum. Because at least with the grenade launcher you have flame rounds which burn zombies and prevents them from turning to Crimson Heads anyway. Shotgun and the magnum, well you could blow their head off preventing them from turning into zombies. Handgun, all you're doing at that point is wasting ammo because eventually they're going to come back. And it's not like the handgun has a lot of stopping power anyway. It's relatively weak compared to how it was in the original. Where the shotgun had, where the handgun had the ability to send a dog flying across the room. But we're not going to put away the handgun just yet, because we still have to fight Elder Crimson. That was a close dodge. 
a really close dodge. I would have had to, if I would have gotten hit right there, I would have to go into that stage spot and pick up the first aid spray. You don't have to worry about the crows in this room. They're just for decoration. At least that's what I like to say. They do move only if you either shoot in this room or if you get the puzzle wrong. As long as you get the puzzle right and you don't use your weapon, they just stand there. There is some shotgun ammo back here, but depending on how many shots it takes me to kill the Elder, Elder Crimson, I may or may not pick them up. If it takes me four shots, four shots or less, I will not pick it up. If it takes me five, I will have to. It's not until this area where you begin to realize just how picky this game is with you having to stand in a particular spot to use an item. You can't just be in a in the general area. You have to be at a very specific spot. Otherwise, for whatever reason, Jill just cannot use the item. <laughs> and the final death mask. This fight, we're gonna try our hardest to stun lock Elder Crimson with using as little ammunition as possible. Ideally, I only wanna use three or four shots. I don't wanna pick up extra shotgun ammo if I don't have to. Four shots, perfect. That means I have just enough. I have just just enough bullets for Plant 42, and I don't have to go out of my way to pick up extra. The only way that fight could have gotten better is if I was able to knock down the Elder Crimson with the shotgun shot, which you can, but it's RNG. Or at least I think it is. Sometimes I've sometimes I shot him from damn near across the room and was able to knock him down. Other times he had to be almost biting me in order to get the knockdown. But if you knock him down, it basically takes away one bullet. That means you get to kill him in three shots instead of four. But four is ideal. As long as I don't have to kill him in five, I'm fine. The second and final first day spray I'm gonna use. I do get to make a, red, a combination between the red and green herb, but that's not until after the boss fight with Plant 42 or before, depending on how I'm feeling. There's decent distance, I guess, either sitting around in this forest or waiting for us in that cabin. I'm not sure. Actually, no, she has to be waiting in the forest because when we get the crank and almost leave, she's opening the door to get in here and knock us out. 
to be completely honest, I'm not even sure. Lisa kind of just spawns wherever she feels like it. I'm convinced she has teleportation powers. And if that's true, that leads me to question, why doesn't she appear after she f jumps off the ledge when you fight her for the third and final time? But resting evil, no yo, what's continuity? See, she somehow open and closes the door, but somehow appears in a spot where Jill can't find her. I guess Jill doesn't have her reveal vision. What I did there was basically just run forward and quickly walk back. And you get her to dodge, and you get her to whiff both of her attacks. She has two different attacks. She normally does that, but there is some times where she will use her giant swing attack. Also, you may or may not have noticed, but I didn't move until her hands were pretty much had a standstill. That's because she has active frames for days with that swing. Even when she's pulling back from the swing, she still has an active hitbox. And Lisa does a lot of damage, so you don't want to get hit by her. And I have just enough shots to fight Plan 42. It takes 11 and 12 shots. 12 at max though. Any more than that and you either missed a shot or it blocked a shot with this pedals. Unfortunately, there is no extra shotgun ammunition on our path, so if I miss a shot against Plan 42, this run is over. I can't ever progress. But that's not something we're going to have to worry about. Hopefully. Yeah, one common trend about this particular category and boss fights is that it leaves you with barely enough ammunition to actually kill the boss, but most of the bosses you kill very fast. Like, Plan 42 is easily the longest boss fight in this game. You don't fight Black Tiger at all, and the Tyrant, since we're using various magnets, is only going to take one shot. Since I'm going to be making the red, the green and red herb, I'm not going to bother with with getting that first aid pack. Also, I'm not going to bother pushing the boxes over the hole because it's actually faster to just run over them and shake out of the Plan 42 than to constantly climb up and down the boxes, having to do that three times. 
And because of that, that's also why I grabbed the first aid spray, just in case I get into uh, orange caution and have my run speed reduced. First of the series of keys we're going to get is the 001 key, then the control room key, then the gallery key, and last but not least, the 003 key. Well, that didn't sound well that didn't sound nice it's a shame that i won't actually see the zombie since i'm never going to be coming into this room again it's a shame that despite this area being one of the cooler areas in the game there's not a lot to do here <laughs> All you do here is just collect a bunch of keys to fight a boss, gain another key for the mansion. That's it. No zombies to really kill since they're all completely out of your way. And you don't want to burn ammunition. The spiders you can easily dodge and you're not going to be shooting bees. So this is really the only part of the game where you can just... Even casually, you could just run through this area, no problem. No, there's no need to burn through all your all ammunition in your health packs. <laughs> and which is probably the number one problem with newer with newer players who play this game for the first time. They feel the need to kill everything. Despite despite one of the obvious hint, end game hints that the game tells you, it's to save your ammo. Which is a smart thing to do anyway, since, well I guess spoiler alert, but the game loves to stockpile you with am ammunition towards the end of the game. And they do it on purpose too. And it also helps to know that there's not a lot of reason to kill more than half the zombies in the mansion. Because when you get the helmet key anyway, most of those zombies are replaced with hunters. And hopefully by then, I would assume you had the shotgun. Otherwise, I'd have to ask, why the hell are you fighting hunters with a pistol? I mean, I'm sure you probably could kill a hunter with a pistol, but why would you? <laughs> because by that time you already have the magnum and the shotgun, and it just takes two or three shots with a shotgun and one or two shots with a magnum to put them down. It's safer to stay in the outer ring of this area and not run towards the inner ring. The sharks are less prone to attack you at that point. Also, I don't think it's faster either way to take the inner ring. It I think it takes about the same distance or same time. Number two. Emergency. Emergency. 
emergency. Unknown source of pressure detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. Reaching 30% of pressure threshold. Reaching 50% of pressure threshold. Activate emergency drainage system immediately. On my way to the shark tank and getting the gallery key. Let's see. The shark skip here looks a lot harder than what it really is. All you do is just hold up left and run. That's it. You don't need to fire the shark. It actually takes longer to do that than just getting this key normally like this. And now both sharks are harmless. It looks impressive the first couple of times. And then you do it yourself and you're just like, that's it. That's all you do. Yep, that's it. That's all you do. It does save quite a bit of time though. At least 15 20 seconds. Since I don't have my normal self-defense item, I have to make sure to get that dodge consistently. I'm not in the mood to use this first aid spray yet, at least not until I fight Plant 42. these pesky bugs before the 003 key and I got just the key item for that I like how this game was smart enough to automatically put away the pesticide when you're done with it, but when it comes to keys, it has to ask you every time, do you want to discard it after telling you how useless it is?
Oh, I kind of fumbled on that a little bit, but no big deal. Here we go for the boss fight. If I, if I had the grenade launcher with acid rounds, it would only take sh six shots. But with the shotgun here, it's going to take 12. And I have to make sure every shot hits. Took all 12 shots, but we got him. With no ammo to spare. See what I mean? This game, this category barely gives you enough ammunition for boss fights. At least if you're speedrunning anyway. If you're just playing the game casually, you'll obviously find more. And you'll have the magnum then, so that helps. Now we make the long, boring stretch all the way back to the mansion. Just another contingency plan in case I get poisoned by one of the snakes I'm going to run across. I shouldn't, but I'm still going to take it just in case. I don't want to ruin another run because I decided to get a little cocky and get bit by a snake, and it just so turns out I got poisoned. Not only does your run speed get reduced when you're poisoned, but there are not a lot of blue herbs on Real Survivor. There's a few, but there's so few and far in between that by the time you do get to one of them, you're probably going to be in danger. So I would much rather just just play it safe. And because I played it safe, I have a first I have a blue herb just in case I get poisoned on my way back here. Cause at least if I get poisoned by a black tiger, there's a blue herb right outside. At that point it's just a matter of will I be in deep caution or not. Hopefully that's that won't be the case though. Gonna pick up this ammo cartridge and the one in the room where you get the battery for Black Tiger. Not Black Tiger, but Yawn. For him, I need eight shots. I have six. This room right here, we are not going to shoot any of these hunters. Hopefully, we're just gonna try and run our try our best to run past them. Wait, there we go. That 
that's a that's a much better way than trying to shoot shoot our way out of there. But that was still pretty bad. I think I think I could have played that one a little bit better by not stopping across the first hunter and just continuing the stair skate. He can either be really aggressive like how he was there and attack you right away, or run after you and then attack you on the stairs, or he could attack you right away while you're running past him and it's a tackle whiff. But yes, I did pick up these, the green herbs just for contingency sakes, because there's going to be a zombie that's going to be really annoying to dodge. Actually, I'm not even going to bother to dodge them. I'm just going to shoot them. Because I only need 8 shots for Yawn 2, and I'll have 11. Besides, I need to reload my shotgun anyway. Just like that. No bother to try to dodge him in that little small space. Knowing down well, I'm in caution. Even though the health counter says I'm fine, I'm pretty sure it's lying. One hit from a hunter doesn't leave you in fine. That shit puts you in caution almost immediately. Because this, because of the greener right in this area, well, not in this area, but in Hell's Hallway, I'm not gonna pick up the self-defense item. Besides, that's extra time wasted that I don't need to burn. I don't need the self-defense item. Actually, it will be extra, extra wasted time because it's my first self-defense item, and the game takes extra time to put you in a tutorial for using self-defense items for your first time. With the Elder Crimson, we're gonna run him one near the wall. Wow, he swung with his wrong hand. He usually swings with his uh, right hand away from the wall or try to grab you, and hugging that wall will let you dodge his attack. And surprisingly enough, I'm still in fine. Either fine or caution, but I'm not in enough danger to where I need to use the green herb, so I'm fine. Final boss that we actually have to kill. One, two, three, four. Now you're probably wondering how how am I getting so many shots off with the shotgun? It's because I'm pump canceling. You could pump cancel the shotgun by aiming, firing, letting go of the aim button again. And what that allows you to do is cancel the recoil recovery of your shotgun. I'm going to reload, clear up some space. And never use this shotgun again.
but yeah, I might have explained that a little too fast with the pump cancel. But with pump cancel, what you do is you aim your shotgun, you fire, let go of the aim, and move either backwards or forward. I prefer to move back just because it's, I just feel more comfortable that way. You can do it with the analog stick or D-pad, but I use the D-pad since that's what you're going to be using to aim anyway. At least that's what I use. I don't use the analog stick. During the final stretch through Hell's Hallway, definitely the easiest. Since Crimson takes forever to attack and the fat zombie is too far away to be a threat. <laughs> and you can just run straight for the door. I'm gonna have to clear up space for the red gem, so I'm gonna be using a first aid. So not, not the first aid, but the green herb here. There we go, cleared up the space. Since I'm going for 80% and not 100, I'm not going to go for the yellow gem. Just going, just going to get the red gem. Even though it shows that I have eight, even though all my slots are filled, I have one more left open because I'm going to discard the helmet key. So after I'm done discarding the helmet key, I'm just gonna pick up the jewelry box and leave. Be done with the mansion. At least for one more time when we're just getting the stone and metal object. When hunters are at a standstill and you're running past them, they have slow reactions. By the time they're actually trying to attack you, you're already out of the room. So you can definitely run past hunters, and it's a lot easier to run past them than to fight them. Especially since you're ill-equipped to handle a hunter anyway. At least I am, since I only have the shotgun with three shots. But there's no reason for me to kill them anyway, since just waste, just waste of time. Stumbled on my words there a bit there. If you're not comfortable with the dodge like I just did, you can circle around the zombie. If you're not feeling confident enough to run past behind his back like I just did, or if you did it too late. Now we're making another long boring stretch to use the battery. This will also be the last time these snakes have any chance of poisoning me. Poisoning me. If I do get poisoned, it's not a big deal since I have this blue herb on deck. And like I said before, fighting Black Tiger, there's a blue herb right outside his room. We're going to be using a particular path to try and avoid the snakes on the far right of this area since they have a greater chance of poisoning you. As opposed to the lone snake on the left, he has the least chance of poisoning you. And since I didn't get bit either times by the snakes, I don't have to worry about getting poisoned at all. 
Or picking up another blue orb for that matter, since I already have one on deck. If these dogs were as aggressive as the dogs were on the collar to get the armor key, I'd probably be dead right now. Thankfully, outside of that one instinct, dogs are very passive for the most part. At least in this version of the game though, not the GameCube version. GameCube version, they're pretty aggressive. I'm not going to solve the jewelry box puzzle until I'm putting away the shotgun and the square crank. I prefer to play it safe and run around the fountain. That way the dog doesn't attack you. If you run past him, he has a greater chance of attacking you as opposed to just running around the fountain like I did. crank foam and Rico run past the hunter like I told you before hunters have extremely bad reactions and they prefer to growl at their enemy as opposed to just attacking them outright and I'm going to showcase that again in this in this next area Two hunters that can easily kill me right now, and I'm just gonna run past them. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> gonna be doing that one more time, too. But that's not until we're almost done with this area. This is a terrible solve. It <laughs> That puzzle is overly, overly picky, picky with with the amount of pixels you actually have to place the puzzle where it obviously needs to go. Even though I had even though I was in the exact spot, I wasn't I had one pixel to work with. Because apparently I that's that's how little space I left for that particular piece. And it only seems to happen with the third and the final piece. Every other piece is goes where they need to go fine. Uh, 
pick up this knife right here and cut down our webs. Spider decided not to be super aggressive for me and just stand just stand in place. Nice. I'm gonna have to practice that puzzle. I have to get it much faster than I have been. Because if everything goes well, you can solve that puzzle 15, 20 seconds, easy. Gotta move this little statue back to its original position. And sooner or later I'm gonna have to mix those two herbs together so I can make space for the silver and gold. Uh, what's that piece? The shaft. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there for a second. Took me a little bit over a minute. That's how long, that's how long it usually takes. almost died there and I'm not talking about the game either okay before being really interrupt interrupted by almost dying when you enter the room the second time to dodge black tiger he can do either his poison his poison spread attack or he can swing at you with his tentacles like he just did if he does if he goes for the poison spread you could just run straight for the door you don't have to run around him like I did Ooh. Yep, slow hunters are still slow. <sighs> and now here's why I need to make space. I'm gonna mix them instead of just using it like that. Not that I'm worried about anything poisoning me, it's just in case I get hit by Lisa. Four, two, three, one.
But yeah, definitely tomorrow I'm going to practice the puzzle solving. Because that Jolly Box puzzle is really, really annoying and I don't want to lose time because of it. It shouldn't take me you no know, close to a minute consistently to solve it just because a piece that's supposed to go there doesn't want to go there. You can end this area, I should have talked about it earlier, but you can actually force Lisa to spawn in different areas and bleh, let me go over that again. You can force Lisa to spawn in different spots in that area depending on which camera angle you trigger first. If you go to to where the switch is, she will appear right she'll appear right next to it. But if you go to where the rack is for the f broken flamethrower, she will appear there. You can use that to your advantage by triggering her to spawn in one area when you need to go to another. It's a very it's a very useful strat to use if you're not confident with Dodge and Lisa in this area yet. Just gonna not gonna bother triggering her to spawn in a different area. Just gonna run past her, activate the switch, put the flamethrower right there. I'm gonna wait until we get the metal object to do it. Another long stretch back to the mansion. Hopefully this is our last one. Oh wait, it is our last one.
Last time I will ever have to see in this game. Just run straight for the door. He's not a threat to anybody. Again, not picking up any self-defense items. All right, let's try not to become a victim of assisted suicide in this run. Wait till Elise is above the Magnum. Trigger for an attack, push down this, this boulder. She's not gonna jump over. There you go, walks over. That's it. No assisted suicide run this time. Good thing about this setup is that if for whatever reason I get caught in orange caution, I have a blue herb stock. I mean, I have a green herb stocked. Because that's what kind of prevented me from getting a better time my last run is um, one of the monsters before the nitroglycerin, he got a he got a little hit on me and it put me in caution. And there wasn't a, for a green herb until I was on my way to fill up the canister. And those two zombies on the landing path won't be a problem until I'm almost done with the game.
even though they didn't get a headshot with the Magnum, I don't have to worry about it becoming back as a Crimson. He's going to stay down for the rest of the game. Actually, he's not going to stay down. He's going to disappear. The combination to get the power key is it's always 8462. It doesn't change. You will notice me killing specific enemies. I had to do that because all those enemies are in my path for walking with the nitroglycerin. And like as you already know, if you get grabbed or hit while carrying the nitroglycerin, it's game over. So we're gonna kill these monsters with Barry's Magnum. Because you know this category is all about killing is all about killing older white people so that younger white chicks can live. I actually put it like that. This category is kind of fucked up. He was a monster that cost my run to be better last time. So I got my run back on him. I just have to hope I don't explode here. If I don't explode here, it's smooth sailing. But I've been pretty good about not blowing up, so I'm pretty confident this time. I say that, but watch me explode. What you're seeing me do is walk three steps and run three steps. What that does is allows you to run in increments without the nitroglycerin going off. But if you run any more than that, it will go off immediately. I'm even playing it safe by only running 
one or two steps. That way, I don't have to worry about exploding. One, two, three, four, five, five. Two, three, four, five. With that, we're just gonna go straight for the final boss, kill him, and leave. But the nitroglycerin walk is... It's annoying. Just because there is a couple of times where even though you've only walked, ran two steps, you can still explode. That's why I play it safe by walking four or even five steps before taking my three steps to run. Because I've lost a couple runs due to exploding like that, and I didn't understand why. But yeah, that the nitroglycerin walk is essentially the last part that could ruin your run. But it could ruin it to the point where your run is over, not just you're losing time. <laughs> Even fights with uh, Yawn too, if you run out of ammunition, you can still go back and get some if you know where some are at. The run is still salvageable. Granted, your time may be bad, it's still salvageable. This area, no. <laughs> it's not salvageable at all. Here we go. Easiest enemy in the game. Easiest boss in the game. Strongest weapon in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the final boss of Resident Evil. Goes down with one shot from Barry's 44. The strongest weapon you'll get out of any game out of any run out of the box. It's so powerful, the game doesn't allow you to reload it. Once you use those six shots, that's it. You're not getting any more. And even with the path that we took, it, it allows you to miss one extra shot. If you miss any more than that, you're going to have a very hard time with the Tyrant. Unless, of course, you got the knife strats down. Then and only then will you have any shot at salvaging the run. That's it, officially the last dodge of any enemy for this game. All we're doing here is running down corridors. Corridors and elevators.
just like that, ladies and gentlemen, that's Resident Evil. Light this flare, and that's it. Just mashing through credits right now. Jill, you did a fine job. Three seconds slower than my PB. Not bad, not bad. I do, I really do have to practice that puzzle, the jewelry box puzzle. That is so, that's holding me back from breaking uh, sub 128. I also apologize for the lack of filling dead air, but since no one watches, it's kind of hard for me to just continue talking to myself about random nonsense. But other than that, good run is good run. I can't complain about it. And now it's time for me to go to work.